I always tell patients changing out an implant and just exchanging it when everything's perfect, it's really simple. Um, it's like changing a, your tires, that's what I tell them. And, and then you have a brand new implant and could the, a new implant rupture? Of course it could, but um, odds are better that it's gonna last you another good long length of time. Hello, welcome to Lipstick and Lipo, your unfiltered guide to plastic surgery. I'm Dr. Smitha Ramanatham in New Jersey, and I've got my co-host here with me, Dr. Ashley Amalfi up in Rochester. And we are continuing this great series on breast augmentations. Um, we're answering very hot topic, need to know questions. And today we are gonna talk about how long your implants last, right? I think this oh. is like the biggest question that people come in asking, they wanna know, Okay, well, they, you know, I feel like everybody hears that they last like 10 years, 15 years. Yes. Um, and so the big question is, okay, so at 10 years, I need to get them out, right? And that's not necessarily yes. the case, right, Ash? It's, it's like the most common myth in plastic surgery is that you have to replace your implants every 10 years. It, it is, I mean, they don't have a shelf life. They're not food. You know, they're a device and they're going to, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to have wear and tear over the years, but there is no hard and fast rule that they have to be replaced at 10 years. Um, right. And so um, they can last a lot longer than that or a lot less. I mean, we see yeah. patients, unfortunately, who have implant rupture prior to 10 years. And then I tell people I take out implants sometimes that are older than me and they're fine. <laughs> and, and, you know, great, you know, you're really <laughs> right. lucky. And, and it, it, it lasted you a super long time, but um, nothing terrible happens at 10 years, right? There's nothing magic about that timeline. No, there's nothing magic about it, but I think that is, I love how you said that. It is one of the biggest myths um, that, you know, we need to replace them at 10 years. And yeah. I think that that just comes from the fact, like you said, there's wear and tear. So after 10 years is typically when we start seeing more rupture or yeah. other issues going on with your, you've aged 10 years, you may have had yeah. children or breastfed. So you know, that's not to say that you won't need your implants changed, but it's not because of the timeline, right? It's most often yeah. because something else is going on. You need a lift or you're, yeah. you want to change sizes or there's a rupture, you're whatever bigger, the case smaller. is. Yes. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. But it's rare, but we exactly. never, I never take out implants. You know, there's no clock. There's no like, okay, it's 10 years, no. come back in, we'll exchange them. That's not really how it works. Yeah. But you know, sometimes people are at like a stage in their life and they're like 10 years in, 12 years in. And like you said, there's things that they, you know, if they had to do it again, they would change little things. And you know, if everything's mm -hmm. really great in your life and it's a really good time to do it, it's also okay to do that, you know, cause it, you know, yeah. the reality is that you're probably not going to have that implant until you're an old lady because it's a device and it's going to fail at some point. So if there's mm -hmm. little things, you know, and your implant is getting to be around that old and there's little things that you would change um, and the time is right for you and your family and it makes sense, then um, then that's certainly something that we do all the time. Um, but you don't have to do it. But, you know, I always tell patients changing out an implant and just exchanging it when everything's perfect, it's really simple. Um, it's like right. changing a your tires. That's what I tell them. And and then you have a brand new implant and mm -hmm. could the, a new implant rupture? Of course it could, but yeah. um, odds are better that it's going to last you another good long length of time. So I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I don't discourage it, I guess, but I don't think it's a rule by any means. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that just sort of brings the point, you know, that usually it's for some other reason, right? You know, whether exactly you're not, you know, you're not like on the clock and you're just like, okay, time to change them out. We're going to put the same one back in. There's usually something else that's going on. And at least 100%. for me, I think the majority of my patients, you know, maybe got their implants when they were in their twenties and got something really big that they loved. And then as they got older, they're like, I don't really want that big anymore. And so they downsized. Yep. Um, but definitely it goes the other way as well. So a hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> but that's usually what it, what it is. We're there for some other reason. And obviously we're going to change out those implants and give you fresh new ones, um, that will yeah. last a lot longer. So, but yeah, you know, it can last a super long time and, you know, I've seen implants that are so old and are great, you know, mm -hmm. are perfectly intact and 
good for them. You know, they had a good long run of it. And, um, you know, usually the rupture rate we quote, you know, across the board is like 1% per year, give mm -hmm. or take. And, um, you know, I think the other thing people think is that when implants rupture, that there's like some big force and something dramatic happens and that implant ruptures. And I think that that's usually the minority of the cases. You know, mm -hmm. I usually tell people it's a device and the device is man-made and it's going to fail. But usually it's just that little wear and tear. It's just rubbing, yeah. rubbing, rubbing in your body for years and decades and it gets just thin. And mm -hmm. it just oozes out a little bit, and it's non-dramatic. It's, you know, um, not much changes. Oftentimes, they're silent, right? I know you talk yeah. to your patients about um, silent rupture and what that means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Oftentimes, you, you wouldn't even know, right, unless yeah. you saw something on imaging or like a mammogram or ultrasound or yeah. MRI, whatever it is, you know. Um, most people don't know that they have a rupture, yeah. and that's okay. It's completely safe. Um, it's not going to cause any harm. I think that's the big scare, right? Um, yeah. And oftentimes people can have ruptured implants, and as long as there are no issues, they don't necessarily have to change it, um, yeah. especially if there's if it's sort of contained. Um, so yeah, so I think it, it's important to just talk about that because I feel like oftentimes people are just nervous about even going ahead with their first surgery because they think, okay, in ten years I have to have a second one, um, and that that isn't the case. Yeah. It may I do, or may not mm -hmm. be the case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do say for the most part, right. Um, if you do get an augmentation, you, most people will need some sort of second surgery at some point yep. down the road. Right. Yeah. But it's not because of the time, the time frame. Yep, exactly. You know, if you get an implant when you're young, odds are you're going to have another breast surgery or two in your mm -hmm. lifetime. But um, if that's okay with you, then absolutely it's worth the investment. Um, I think the other thing we should talk about is the FDA guidelines regarding how we image breast implants. So how do we know if they're still okay, if there's a rupture? Um, and the new FDA guidelines are to get some imaging of your breast implant when it's seven years old. So we kind of are waiting a longer period of time because implants don't rupture in those first mm -hmm. few years. They're, they're all, you know, we were getting lots of tests and everyone's implant looked perfect. So the FDA right. changed the guideline and increased that length of time. So we don't do anything until they're seven years old and we can do something really simple like an ultrasound and an ultrasound is a great test um, to look at implants. Is that mm -hmm. what you tell your patients as mm -hmm. well? Yeah, exactly. Yep. I mean, and it's so, and like you said, right, I think the guidelines were different before, right, before they recommended MRIs and, um, but they found that there weren't rupturing. So, you know, yeah. why, why get these really expensive studies for no reason? So seven years. Right. Um, and of course, you know, that doesn't exclude, um, screening, right? You, so you should still, if it's time for you to get screened for breast cancer, you're still going to be doing that, right? So this is sort of imaging that's just looking at the implant to detect rupture. That's it. You're still yeah. imaging yeah. your breast as you normally would, um, yeah, that's for important. other things. Yeah. So that's important. Um, yeah. But, and mammograms, but, yeah, mammograms are really good at looking at breast tissue, but they're not great at looking at breast implants. Mm -hmm. So you should get your mammogram every year because that is part of your routine health maintenance. But yeah. just because you have a mammogram doesn't mean that they're looking at your breast implant. They're looking at your breast tissue. So mammograms right. are not, they're not great at looking at implants. And so that's why the FDA recommends that ultrasound to look at the implant itself. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. And of course, if there are issues that you're noticing with your breast, things look different, they feel different. Yes, um, exactly. Then obviously we would follow that up with imaging um, as a you know as an as needed basis. Exactly. So call us, you know, because just because it hasn't been seven years doesn't mean something can't happen. And uh, we'll just order that test for you and take a look. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, if everything looks great, we don't have to do anything for a while. And we'll just see it because we like seeing you. But yeah. um, that implant's going to be with you for a while, which is a really good thing. Yep. Love it. So biggest we myth. We did it. Debunked. Yeah, we debunked it. We debunked the math. <laughs> we um, debunked it. That's so awesome. you do not have to change out your implants every 10 or 15 years unless there's some other issue going on. Um, exactly. So this is a great, great episode. We've got plenty more coming your way. So make sure you subscribe to Lipstick and Lipo. And we'll see you guys soon. All right. Take care, you guys.